Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Um, in the last video, we looked at uh, code coverage, and in this video, which will be relatively short, we'll be looking at uh, VS Code integration, and this is how we can be able to integrate our project, our tests, as well as PyTest with uh, Visual Studio Code. So for this tutorial purposes, I'm using uh, Visual Studio Code, but similar processes uh, apply for, for example, PyCharm. I'm not so sure about Sublime, te Sub Sublime Text, beg your pardon, or Atom, but in this case, since I use Visual Studio Code, I'm going just to spend a couple of minutes just to show you how we can easily integrate uh, our test inside um, uh, Visual Studio Code. So at the moment, we've been running PyTest uh, on the terminal, and this is what we've been using to see you know, all the tests, uh, what is failing and what is not failing, and all of that. And this sometimes takes time. So, and every time, maybe perhaps when we write a new test, we have to run even the rest of them, even if it's not necessary. So, one of the easiest ways uh, to do developing is uh, to integrate with Visual, uh, Visual Studio Code. And one of the advantages of using uh, Visual Studio Code is that uh, Python testing, especially using PyTest and unit test, is deeply integrated uh, with the editor. So for now, I'm going to minimize this, and I'm going to hit Control Shift P. Uh, if uh, because I'm on Windows, if you're in Mac, uh, is I believe it's Command Shift P. And here I'm going to just type tests, and there's a lot of things here that we see that we can be able to do. For example, we can be able to run tests, we can be able to discover tests. And remember, one of the advantages we said of PyTest, which is as an advantage above the default Django test cases, is the ability to discover tests. So for this one, I'm going to click on configure tests. Make sure you click on configure tests, or you can just type configure test, and it will come here on the top. So I'm going to click on configure. And it's going to give me three options. One is the unit test, uh, the second is PyTest, and the other is NOSE. So NOSE is an alternative to PyTest, uh, but in my opinion, PyTest is the better framework. Again, in some instances, when you run Visual Studio Code, actually we can be able to find a prompt that comes on the bottom right, asking you to configure your test. In this case, it's not popping up, but sometimes uh, if if Visual Studio Code detects that you are uh, you are having tests in your project, it might ask you to configure. So in this case, uh, we select PyTest. It's going to ask us the root directory, and see here it's it has a dot. Again, remember in the previous tutorial we were talking the dot usually means the root directory, and that is what we had put um, in our pytest.ini file. So if I can just come to, no, I mean in our coverage RC. So if I come to this, no, 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 it's in the pytest.ini. When we say dash dash coverage is equals to dot, and we said this uh, dot means root directory. So now I'm going to select the root directory here. Okay, and if you look at the bottom tab, you'll see it's saying discovering tests, then it's saying running tests. So a few things can happen here. So mine, when it's, it's saying discover tests, then saying running tests, it means that it has been able to discover all my tests and it has been able to find them. However, in some instances, we'll find that that does not happen and there might be errors. So one of the things that you can be able to do is uh, to see if there's any errors, you come here, open the terminal, click on the three dots, open output, then on the drop down, come and look at Py Python test log, click on that. So I'm going to run uh, this command again, I'm going to say control shift P so that you can see what is happening behind the scenes. Configure tests, I select PyTest. Oops, I think I clicked quickly. Configure test. So you can see here, uh, this is the prompt I was talking about. It's saying no test has been discovered. Please check the configuration settings for the tests. And you here you can click on Configure Test Framework. Again, select PyTest. Then click on the root directory. So you can see here something has happened. 
starting here. So first of all, it's, it has discovered where my Python file is. Uh, it's discovering my test and the root directory. It has discovered where our root directory is. And it's also doing HTML coverage because it has de detected our pytest.ini. Again, the pure reason as to why it asks us it's asking us to find the root directory so that it can find this file. And now it's saying run test. So one of the things we can do is that we can click on run tests and it can, it's giving us some options. So this one I'm going to say run all tests. And you can see here it's also running the tests. Here it's clicking running tests. And here it's showing in the Python test log, it's showing all the tests again is printing them to the terminal in a similar way as what we were doing previously okay but in this case we've not typed pytest but again you might ask yourself what is the point of doing this actually the the main advantage of doing this is actually not on this terminal side that was just to show you how to debug so some of the let me just return this so some of the problems that you might encounter here is that perhaps if you've forgotten to install a package, if you've not selected the correct environment, or if there's any typing errors in your code, uh, uh, the discover test might not appear. And here is where you'll see the error so that you can correctly uh, solve that. So here you can see there's a small, uh, on bottom, there's a, a tick and it's saying eight. This means that eight tests have passed. But perhaps the most unique or the, the, the biggest thing that um, VS Code gives us is that on the right, you'll find that there's this uh, flask uh, or chemistry flask that is showing. And this is where all our tests now are. So if you look here, you'll find that there's a classroom. And this classroom, of course, corresponds to the folder in which our tests are. For now, we've only written tests inside this classroom folder, hence here. And it's showing us this test.py. So if we had multiple files with multiple tests, you'll see all of them. And you can see for now it's saying that all of them have passed. I can come to the class, test classroom model. And if I open model, this is... Uh, I mean, if I open my tests, this test classroom model is this. This is actual class. And I can decide, for example, to run this test classroom model alone or the test student model. I can decide just to run this alone. So I can just click on this. And you can see for now it's ignoring all the rest, the, the previous test, and is only now going to run this test alone. Again, remember one of the advantages we said of PyTest is being able to isolate and individually run individual tests so that we don't waste time. So for example, if I'm actively developing or wanting to change this, so for example, if I change this to physics, instead of running PyTest and running you know, all the tests at once, I can just run it here. And, an and another unique advantage what you're seeing on the browser is that now VS Code is able to identify this as test and I can, it's showing us that we can be able to run our tests directly from the code. And this, this is so cool. So I can click on run tests. Of course, I expect this test to fail. So let's see. Oops, let's see, drop down here. Just give me a second. Uh, let me run this test. For some weird reason, it's not failing. It's showing me that the test has passed. Let me try to do, to run this on the side to see if it's going to, oops, okay write something crazy here okay i need to save this or perhaps i was not saving run this test ah yeah cool so um, i was not saving the file so what you can see now is that uh, everything here on the left becomes red and here is showing me that uh, 
fail that assertion error physics is not equals to x x x x and now you can see instead of going to the terminal everything we are getting inside the browser i mean inside the code editor and this is so cool so i can see this has failed i can see the assertion error here and now i can just come and write uh, physics save and i can run this individual test again this is so cool is going to discover that and now everything is okay, it's going back to green and everything is green. So the advantages of doing this, guys, is that now we can be able to individually run individual tests as we go along so that we don't waste a lot of time going back and forth to the terminal, running all of the files so that we can identify the wrong one and coming back again. Everything can be done inside the browser. Of course, there's a few commands here. For example, we can be able to debug tests. And this is where... If you want to debug test, if you've used something like IPDB before, this is where, for example, we can come and put this marker as a breakpoint uh, on one of, you know, in one of the lines, and we can, okay, now let me do Django. And this is where we can be able, from the code editor, be able to go line by line debugging uh, our, our tests. Again, for the, for the purposes of time in this tutorial, I, I'm not going to, to do that, but I'm going to link a video in the description below that was done by somebody from Microsoft who uh, details uh, how you can use VS Code to debug uh, Python or PyTest uh, tests, especially in the Django environment using VS Code. It's about 40 minutes long and um, I don't want to do that in this video. So I'm just going to cancel this debug. Yep, I'm going to return to my test. Another thing we can be able to do is that we can be able to show the test output and we can be able to discover tests. This happens, for example, if you add a test, and I'm going to cancel this breakpoint. If we add a test and perhaps it's not showing here, this is where you just come refresh. It's going to discover all the rest of the tests and then it's going, we can run all of them just to make sure that everything is okay. So in the next video, this was the last video that I'll be doing some sort of setup and configuration. And in the next video, that's when now we'll start actual coding. Uh, and we are going to introduce a package called Hypothesis. And in my opinion, that's, if not the coolest, is the most awesome testing package that is out there in the Python ecosystem. It's actually one of the main reasons why I decided to do this entire tutorial series. And we'll be using Hypothesis to test uh, custom Django REST framework API views, uh, create uh, or delete API views, or other generic API views that come uh, with Django REST framework. We are going to test authentication. We are going to test a lot of things using uh, Hypothesis. And I think uh, the next tutorial will be so cool and I can't wait to share that with you. So again, if you're finding me for the first time, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, like, leave a comment, ask me any questions and uh, I'll usually get back to you within a day. And uh, also make sure to follow me in the following social media profiles. And yeah, I look forward to